your book deals with some mind-bending concepts. But the biggest one, I suppose, is the idea that time does not really exist. Tell us why. Time as we know it does not exist uh, uh, in the large universe or in the small, uh, in the very small distances. So we have a, a complex idea of time, uh, but it's only true for us at our scale. It changes, uh, uh, the way time behaves changes uh, as soon as we go to uh, more fast uh, speed or bigger distances or smaller distances. One of the points you make is that the, is that the higher you are, that time actually moves more slowly, that your head will live longer than your feet. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the first thing that we have discovered. That's a fact. It's not a theory or an idea. It's something that we measure today. If you take two clocks and you put one up and one down and wait a little bit and you bring them back together, the one up has measured more time than the one down. So there's more time up here than down there. Um, so you're right. Your, your head uh, um, has lived longer than your feet. And if you go up in the mountains, uh, uh, when, when you meet your brother who has lived uh, by the sea, um, you have aged more than him. There's a teeny effect, mm. but they're real. And uh, um, if we go near a massive uh, object, like a big planet or a big star or black hole, this becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, so time can slow enormously. You, you make the point, in fact, that time is what we make of it, that it is our perception. And I suppose there's a, a philosophical aspect to this because you quote Aristotle, Aristotle believed that time measures change and if there is no change, there is no time. And then there is Newton, of course, the world that we inhabit of Newtonian laws and that is that there is absolute time. But you're looking at a combination of those things, a perception of time and a reality of time. Yes. Um, the uh, idea of what time is changed in the, in the centuries. It changed uh, with Newton, it changed again with Einstein, and it's changing again now with research in quantum gravity. My, my, my job as a physicist is to study quantum gravity. And we have uh, uh, slowly learned more and more. And as you said, uh, in, in antiquity for Aristotle um, and for centuries, uh, time was just a measure of the change. Day, night, day, mm. night, this is time. You, you count how much things change. And Newton told us uh, about this absolute common time. He convinced all of us of this absolute common time, which then turned out to be only an approximation. It's almost true, but not really true. And as soon as you, um, again, as soon as you go near heavy stuff or you move rapidly or you go into small, it's not true at all. So that Newtonian time is an approximation of something else. At the fundamental level, when you go to uh, quantum gravity, when you go to the microstructure mm. of reality, there is nothing like Newtonian time. The only thing that exists, uh, if you want, is change, uh, but not to change uh, um, all together like a director of an orchestra uh, giving the rhythm of mm. everything. There's this discording and, uh, and disordered change. What you mentioned there the, the world of quantum physics, and this is where things become very strange because time there if I'm right, folds back in on itself. There is no future, there is no past. It raises this question. What is real? The reality that we perceive and the, 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 the measurement that we give to time or, or this sub-atomic tiny level of reality in quantum physics of which we are all made up uh, from, is that the reality where none of this, no past, no future and no present actually exist at the same time? Well, you know, what is real is a slippery question um, <laughs> that philosophers discuss uh, uh, a lot. Um, a piece uh, of uh, iron is certainly real, it's a piece of iron, but if you look into small, uh, it's made by atoms. Uh, which one is more real? Well, they're both real in a, in a different way. You can see a wood from a distance, uh, uh, a forest, uh, and, uh, and it's just a one uniform green. And when you go next to it, it's just a lot of trees. And if you go even smaller, you see the little bugs walking on the, on the trunks. So reality has many layers. And I think uh, we understand it better 
when uh, we understand more of these layers and how they talk to one another, how they are related to one another. So we're not confused uh, if we see the trunk of the trees and also the forest, and we should not be confused uh, if we see a piece of iron and the atoms, uh, and we should not be confused uh, if we think about our common notion of time, but something else more um, different than uh, it's at an, some underlying level. Reality is complex. Reality is not just mm. <clears throat> what looks to us uh, at the first uh, impression. Let me ask you about that eternal question of time travel. You believe that that is, in fact, achievable, don't you? Well, um, our life is a time travel, isn't it? <laughs> we, we travel through time for about uh, a few decades. <laughs> uh, so that's easy. Uh, it's a little bit uh, less easy, but it's possible, and we know for sure it's possible, to go very far in the future. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, of money. If we can go to Mars and uh, if we go to other stars, if we can go to near a black hole, we wait near a black hole for a day or two, we come back, and we come back in the distant future. So traveling to the future, even the very distant future, century, millennia, we know is possible. Now traveling to the past, which is probably what you want to know, mm. um, I think it's... Uh, uh, not logically impossible, but practically completely impossible, um, because uh, of the um, because of the second principle of thermodynamics, because of the way uh, the world is organized, uh, because of the fact that we naturally have memories of the past and not of the future, and that's what we mean by slowly traveling toward mm. the future. Uh, the fact that we remember the past and not the future. So traveling to the past uh, would mean uh, being in some time and having memory about the future, and that's uh, very hard mm. and not obviously extremely unlikely to happen. Carla Rovelli, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.